Welcome Forex fans, it's Rob here from Explominate here with the newest indie Forex game called Stellar Sovereigns. And this one's actually taken a few of us by surprise here at Explominate. I tried it and I'm starting to see some pretty cool depth here that you just wouldn't expect from an indie developer and I think a sole developer at that. So there is a lot of good things here that maybe will appeal to you and so I'm here to show this game off a little bit in an episode or two. And also to try to kind of figure it out, maybe get some input from people who maybe have, may have played it for some time because I understand it was on itch.io for a little while before it's now come to Steam in version 1.0. So I'm excited. Hopefully you guys are excited. There's a lot to this that is going to be very different from your average 4X game. And I think that that's going to appeal to a lot of you. So the only, there's, I mean, there's, there's going to be some criticisms I have for it and I think you'll you'll see some of them as I play it because I don't think I'll need to explain some of the stuff that might be a little too obtuse but for those of you who enjoy some depth to your mechanics and maybe some exploration and trying to figure out how to play a game you might enjoy this one so without further ado let's get started so First and foremost, there's actually a lot of avatars here. I can click through all these, and I'm not sure if they change gameplay. In fact, I'm pretty sure they don't. But there are so many of them. So many of them, and some of them look really fantastic. Some of the aliens are just very alien-like, and I really appreciate that. We're going to go with this like generic thing here because it just looks generic and robotic. And that logo looks pretty cool. The emblem, I should say. And we'll go with... I don't know, do they have a greenish? Yeah, the greenish... I don't know. The blue looks good with the face mask there, though. So we'll start. With, we'll just go with the blue, and we'll click here. We'll go to. I wonder if these are just changing. Yeah, they're changing the ship models. It looks like anything bluish. All right, we'll go with the Astral Space Core. In fact, that's what that's what we'll name ourselves: the Astral Space Core. And we'll leave everything as it is, except for this disc. So I'm not a huge fan, personally, of 3D maps. This game has a 3D map. And I just find it a little bit more difficult to wrap my head around, because I guess I'm stupid. So I'm going to go with disc, which kind of flattens things out a little bit, which helps me orient myself better, and also kind of keep track of things a little bit better. But you can do all sorts of stuff, like Helix. This is absolutely insane. Spherical, spiral, random. Yeah, all of it can be pretty wild. But a disc, again, is probably the easiest one for me to wrap my head around. It's the closest to being a flat map as you can get. So we'll go ahead and create. And we'll call this Explorminate. Oh, that's not how you spell Explorminate. We'll create. Oh, that already exists. That's probably because I... All right, we'll do Explorminate 11. How about that? It's probably because I already made an Explominate when I first started to try to play this game and see what it was all about. All right, if you haven't already noticed, there's a lot of blue. I mean, there's a lot of blue in this UI, and that takes some getting used to. I think there should be some, maybe some different colors added, but... I don't really have any issue, real issue with the UI other than it's a lot and I still haven't quite figured it out. So you're given the option to create your own starting combat fleet and the tutorials are on there and I turned them off because honestly I can't read that much text and I'm not going to read that much text here in a video. But basically you start with the ability to create your own like basically your, your master fleet, right? And in doing so, you can compare all these different hulls here you know of course you have different like the carrier is going to have less ordinances but more modules your cruiser is going to have more well maybe not quite as much your battleship definitely has more ordinances and i'm assuming the dreadnought no maybe not yeah maybe maybe the battleship has what we want because we want those ship models look pretty good actually I'm not gonna lie not bad and this is yeah, that's a little Okay, same thing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and select that one as our main like mainstay, the uh, the capital ship of our, our fleet here. And then we have escort vessels. So in this, we can do maybe 
something a little bit more close in. I don't know what their actual roles are. Didn't say too much here as far as their roles go. They each have the same amount of modules. No, they don't. This one has some missiles. We'll take the missiles. And then we will go with something a little bit little a little bit more up front, maybe, I guess. I don't know. I don't know the differences, and they don't explain it. And I don't think it was really mentioned in the the tutorials either. So they got auto cannons, laser battery, and a kinetic torpedo. Auto cannon, auto cannon, and then what is that? A plasma blaster. And then we have javelin launchers. Let's do a frigate. Looks like it's got a little bit of everything here. So auto cannon, a laser battery, and also a kinetic torpedo. All right, so that's going to be my starting fleet. And it's going to be the Raven Squadron. How about we call it the Exterminators? Just to kind of remember it. Because you'll see really quickly right off the bat that we have quite a few different things going on here. So let's zoom out first. And as you can see, it is a 3D map. It looks pretty darn good. I'm not going to lie. I Again, I have a hard time, and I hope that they'll add a flat map option because that's just more my speed. But it does look pretty good. And even recently, he added the developer that we've been talking to a UI scale. So it was, it was before like that. It was just huge, right? And now I've been able to scale it back a little bit. I wonder how, how much does the contrast work here? Let's see. Let's look at the contrast. Yeah, no, it looks like it's best right there in the middle. Star chart brightness, you can dim it a little bit. Ooh, I like that. See, you can dim it. There's there's some nice little... And you also can give this the background different colors. We'll leave it as blue. But, yeah, I mean, the great thing is, is that those options were added right before release because our reviewer was like, hey, uh, I don't like the UI. <laughs> it's a little too big. And the developer was responsive enough to be like, all right, well, I'll give you a UI scaler. And so we're we're here now with a UI scaler. So we have our colony flotilla. We have our defenses, a trade station. Sorry, I, this is the actual planetary system itself. So you can see over here, there's a gas giant. There's Dorsite Prime, which is our first, our like our main planet, our home world. And it's the continental. And then also we have a little moon right there. And then over here, we'll have the exterminators, which is the basically like the capital fleet that we have. Our shipyard, which builds more. And then our quarry flotilla, which is a mining group. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how to use them yet. I'm trying to figure that out. And so, because the exterminators are basically going to act as our primary um, scouting fleet for now, we're going to use them. We're going to right click over here and I guess that's probably the closest No, actually. No, I don't know. It might be. I do wish there was like some distance. Oh no, it does tell me. Okay. So this is 14 light years away. So we'll go there instead. All right. There's no real easy way to make this look <laughs> easy to, to understand. Oh, that's not bad right there. The problem is I can't use like WASD to move around the map like a normal game. And I can't like scroll or anything like that. So, I mean, it doesn't look like I can, nope, can't go to the sides. So there's no movement. That's very much like Sword of the Stars in my opinion. I remember that being the case with Sword of the Stars. So in research, we call this the technology forest is what he had it originally. But now it just says research, which I think is better anyways. And... Through here, we can look to a lot of different things that we'll have to eventually re research, but a lot of it's locked off from, from I guess, like, I guess there's a hard lock or a soft lock on, on finding partial salvage. But we can come down here for integrity. What is integrity? Structural reinforcement, computing, artificial intelligence designed to enhance system operations, so better power output. Engineering, let's see, unlocks a module that increases the vessel's power buffering capability with a lot of these are oriented towards your your ships. 
orbital station unlocks the construction of an orbital station per colony for defensive purposes. Platforms, economics, there we go. So what does that do for us? FTL broadcast. With the power of media delivered by FTL broadcast, the government can capitalize on its people. Political capital gain by plus 25%. Research costs negative fifteen percent. I feel like that'd be something we should do like immediately, right? Just like knock out the thing that's gonna help me with. So we, I don't know. I mean, I guess a hundred percent of our budget would be the best. And there's because you get to, okay, you get into higher risks. Okay, so this provides no risk. We're a hundred percent zero risk. I guess risk meaning like risk of failing, risk of maybe having setbacks. I don't know. I don't know, but we're going to go ahead and start with hyperlink neck in order to increase our overall research capabilities. We're going to look through all these different menus here. So here's our government and it gives you our breakdown here. So our income tax and then our military salary, colonial upkeep vessels, a positive 208. I don't know if that's 208,000 or if that's just 208.057, but yeah, all these things here. So we can give research grants, which I guess will increase yeah, or increase our research, but we lose government points, I believe. Sure. Yeah. Whereas we can do propaganda and I guess get nope. So we're using some sort of resource here. And it's up here. Hopefully we can mouse over it here in a second. So I'm gonna increase my research by two percent in order to in order to avoid any like additional nastiness from whatever that possible resource is called let's go over here political capital all right so we can use political capital to increase our research which we're going to do for just a little bit a wee bit here here we can use political capital to give tax breaks increase the population growth and increase military recruitment and also increase pioneer motivation Okay, well, there's a lot of systems here. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot. And we're going to do our best to figure it out. So we're going to come over here. And then also we've got domestic. So we've got, I guess there will be some, we got tariffs here. We got consumerism. Doesn't tell me what those do. Unfortunately, no mouse over works for that. So this is some sort of subsidy cost of something, domestic subsidy. But I don't know what this consumerism and meaning like more money, I guess. But I don't really, I don't really know. Foreign, we don't have, we haven't met anybody yet. So we'll go ahead and click out of here. We'll come over here to the exchange. This is basically like a galactic exchange, galactic market. Here's our empire. So we have points that we can add. Yeah, okay. A populous society favors having a large population, encourages population growth across the empire. So this is something that we're going to allocate points to right now. Metropolitan civilization. Overcrowded colonies do not deter metropolitan civilization, mitigating its effect on population growth. Consumerist mentality. People that are is characterized by preoccupation with the acquisition of consumer goods. Wow, there's a lot going on here. So brilliant minds. I'm going to go ahead and finding and training the best minds of each generation in the ways of scientific principles can add to the chances of Eureka breakthroughs. We'll add a couple to that. Maybe we wait. Maybe we do a couple more. Nope. Yeah, we do that. And then we try to figure out where we want to go from there, I guess. Because there's a lot of things to add to this. So I guess this is our way of like customizing our our empire here. So a populous society, large population. We're meticulous and brilliant. I think I'm going to go with military tendency because those are always more fun. And avid builders. I am a, I am a colony developer, so I'm going to do that. Skilled architects, well-made designs and planning, sheer skill. Okay, so cost of colonial upkeep is reduced. Adept agrarians for some food i'm sure uh let's keep going skilled miners the excavation of mineral rich deposits made more efficient through the empire's highly skilled miners 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 seriously what's wrong with me 
All right, we're going to go back up here to military tendency. And I'll just add a little bit more to that. So it looks like the thresholds become higher once you reach new levels. And I assume that you'll probably get more. Yeah, it looks like you do get more. So you get more points as you do stuff. So explore previously unknown galaxy or unknown system. We're going to get one. Establish a new colony on planet. And that'll help us continue to, you know, like flesh out who we are. That's pretty cool. I like this. Oh, and it puts me on like a political spectrum. So, yeah, we're inching towards communism, I guess, and less away away from capitalism. And I'm I'm guessing this is some sort of, uh, yeah, federalism. Yeah, that's what it is. So there's communism, capitalism, federalism, and socialism. I feel like this is okay. Well, we'll figure that all out as we go. There's a lot to this game, as I said. So we've got these guys going towards Sias here, Sias. And then what's the last thing we've got here? We've got diplomacy. We don't haven't met anybody yet, but there are four other nations. So we will eventually meet them. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start and actually finish our first turn here. Now that we've explored all the systems and are trying to make heads or tails of all of it. So we'll move this to look here as we can see our, our unit going that way. Our fleet, I should say. There's no music. I just realized there's no music. Oh man, it's so quiet. So one thing I was warned is that the game has definitely got a slow start. So we've gained an empire point. So I guess that means we can come back over here and maybe pop another point in there. Yes. Okay, cool. So that is how we're going to continue to flesh out our thing. Our, our race here is that as we gain new points from various different thresholds, various different like missions, we will be able to add to our traits and become unique depending on our play style. So fleet arrived, the exterminators. We can now look to see what's here. So we've got a volcanic planet, a tropical planet. That's not bad. Not a bad start. All right, so let's go ahead and get our colony flotilla there. And you can come over here and take a look at Hoseon, Hoseon. But the great thing is, is that we have a tropical planet, which I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to take care of. We're going to go ahead. Oh, we also have a continental. Wow, what a great start. I'm, I don't, I've don't. i started a few times to kind of see what's going on with this game. Never seen that kind of start. So let's look at what colony development looks like. Strangely enough, it's got this like weird live feed thing. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but it's there. In fact, I think it could be better without it. I don't I don't know. It's weird. It's like a it's like a thing that you almost don't understand quite why it's there, but sure, why not? And the thing is too, the strange thing is like the rest of the game looks pretty good, but this kind of looks like 1990s graphics. But I'm not going to get too much into that. So settles pioneers population under colonies. So we can improve We can improve the industrial sector. Let's see what we can do. Improvement here. Mega refinery. Planetary mining output increases by 30%. Precious metals and stones resources. Resource rates plus 30%. And then we've got the gigafactory. Trade goods. Crafting rates increased by 50%. Power nexus. Resources extraction rate plus 10%. Planetary mining output. I feel like that's kind of my thing. So I'm going to do that. Housing sector. Oh, it's, it's thundering. Agricultural sector, I mean, we're plus 19, so I feel like that means we're good, right? Let's take a look here. Our extraction rate's 19% of all of those. Yeah, there's so many different systems here that it's almost hard to kind of like figure all of it out <laughs> in one go. So as you can see, this is a game that if you like systems, if you like a lot of new systems, you're going to enjoy figuring this game out. 
So this is definitely one I'm going to return to once I've played it more, but I definitely was hoping to show you guys like a, a showcasing of it. So that's why I'm here, but I, I definitely have a, a, a desire to come back to it. So improvement for our research capabilities. Let's see what we got here. Education center, scientific aptitude plus 0.01 or 0 0.1. Sorry. R and D work placement, research complex, research bonus, 5%. We're going to take that. Oh, I don't have the money. Okay. Well, then never mind. So where's my money? It's up here. All right. So we're going to lose money for building that, but we're still going to be all right, I guess. I hope. All right. I well, I like the sound effects. I mean, it's funny and kind of maybe uh very indie as they felt i definitely liked them i just liked having something some sort of sound i'm gonna make sure i haven't turned it all the way down turned it off maybe no it's not off but it was low enough that i couldn't hear it that's what it is Hopefully that's just loud enough that you can hear it and not drown me out. Okay, so there is music. It was just turned down low enough. All right, so we're going to continue because I want to see, well, I want to know how colonization goes. So we're going to get there. Colony flotilla there. Flotilla arrived. We can colonize target. So what about this? So we can go to our continental planet, right? And hit a button. Something. I guess. I don't know. Fog cover. Active planet core. Meteor deposits. Ooh, look at this. This is a good planet, like on in every level. I don't I don't get it. How do I do it? Opens the colony system. Okay. There we go. All right. Select the, I think it was this one, right? Yep. There we go. Minimum requirements. What is all this? Oh, I have to add to it. Okay. So 2,500 of this. Hold shift plus 100. Wait, so was I supposed to load that stuff before? Auto load fleet is not an own system. So I had to, I needed to have loaded all that before I got here. Ah, oh, that would have been cool to know. System explored. Let's go look at that. We got a savanna planet, an arid planet, and a gas giant. Construct mining stations to extract mineral resources. So does that mean that I can take these guys here and send them there? We'll do, we're going to try. All right, and you can go there. I feel like those colony flotillas should be ready to go. I didn't realize you had to like load them up before you left. All right, what is this? Signal detected, signature detected. Does that mean there's somebody there? I think it does. Cassiopeia. All right, scientific discovery, Dorsi Prime. So, all right, Empire point gain, what is that? What do we gain it for? What does it say? Does it say why? Empire Empire Solar System. Oh, I get one for every solar... Oh, wow. For every solar system I explore, I get one. And let's send you here to see if who, this, who it is that's there. 
But let's look. Tundra, a moon, arid, and another arid. So like I said, I was really lucky to pick up that that really good solar system right there. All right. We keep going. And then once... Okay, so you're there now. And... <laughs> okay. Um, there we go. Alright, so I guess we load from here. But we need a lot. Like, how, how much was it? Auto load. How about that? That looks like it should be about right. All right, so then we'll take you and go back. Sectoid fleet. Okay, well, what's a sectoid fleet? Inspect fleet. Are these good guys? Or, I mean, like, are they just people? Unknown system. Do we do we now know the sectoids or are the sectoids like bad? Like, am I? Oh, I must be at some sort of like home station for them. That is not good. We should turn around. We cannot turn around. <laughs> We're going to be screwed. All right. Well, let's see what happens. All right, so we had a Eureka. Hyperlink net was completed, which is great. So commerce, we could look to upgrade the cargo hold of light freighters, increasing their freight capacity. Colonial, automation, the, app the application of various automation, automation, yeah, automation efforts of tor towards employed colonial sectors to maximize output of the cost of, the, okay, whatever. Extraction improvement. Gene therapy increases the rate of population growth. I feel like that might be something we should want. But you know, we'll do f we'll do food because I know food's always something we can, we could use. Food's good, man. I'll tell you what. So with that, I feel like this is bad. Like sex toys might be like the big bad here. I don't know. Maybe I meet them. I did not meet them. <laughs> I went to war with them immediately. Oh, no. Battle stations, can I get out of here? Nope, I can't. So we're going to go ahead and command this and see how combat is. Can you... Oh, you can select all of them. Very good. So let's move them towards each other. And we'll unpause it. I definitely am digging this. This is this is unique for sure. That's cool too, this whole tactical screen here. And I can only imagine that this is the kind of stuff that like people really get into different hard points and everything let's see let's see how this goes for me it's going to go really poorly i know that this tactical view is really cool i wonder what this countdown's for Is that when everything explodes? Like me? Okay, why did that happen? Why didn't it? What? Okay. I don't understand what just happened there. 
Why, why was it so short? Okay, so... Something about cutbacks. Let's see what's going on here. Research setting cutback. Necessary adjustment to research spending to avoid financial debt has been conducted. Reducing contribution to each attribute. Oh, wow. So I can't even con contribute at all? Okay. Is that because I have zero? Why do I have zero money? Am I doing something horribly wrong here? Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I am. I have zero political capital, so let's go back and roll that back. Do I need to tax my people a little bit higher? I do. I'm sure they're going to be really excited about that, too. All right, so fleet arrived. Can I get rid of those? Yes, I can. System explored Cassiopeia. They have a forest, a desert, and a tundra. An empire point gain. And then the research spending cut back. So let's go and do something with that empire point. All right, so... <clears throat> Oh, wow. So that's physical endurance on a battlefield. That's actually not what I was hoping. I was hoping for something ship-related, and instead I did something much worse. <laughs> so, all right. Born starfarers as they fly amongst the stars, giving them the ability to fly faster than most in FTL. I like that idea. All right. And then proficient constructors. You know, study of xenobiology offers opportunities for agrarians to better exploit the consumable resources of other worlds. There's a lot going on here. Maybe I need to find something related to money since I clearly am not doing well with money. Natural merchants. The merchants of the empire skillfully sell their goods at an inflated price tag that increased profitability. Let's see how well that works for me. All right. Come over here. And hit the turn button. And then I want to know why that combat ended so quickly. Battle time, six minutes. All right, let's do it. Let's do it again. I feel like you guys shouldn't be letting each other down here all like you are right now. Can we? Yes, we can. We can create formations, which is good. Continue moving in to see if we can make contact and see what combat looks like. Still haven't made contact. All right. Now we got four minutes left. Where are you? Oh, there they are. All right, so let's see how well this goes for me. <laughs> what are we firing at over there? Like, what are, you, what are you guys firing at? Tell me, I need to know. Because I've told you to hit that. So why are you shooting the other direction? Is there something over here, like cloaked something? Wow, okay, so combat's very detailed. I'm pretty sure that my little frigate here is about to get murdered. Yep. Surprise, surprise, it got murdered. 
Yep, in my... Oh, man. For the sake of looking at it and watching it, I have lost my starting fleet completely. What is the Achilles? I wish it showed me like what kind of weapon or ship class it was. Not that it matters, because they're all gonna die. And I mean, for what it's worth, it looks really nice. It definitely has a Sword of the Stars feel. I can see what that comparison's all about. So clearly they're like the bads, right? Like I guess they're just kind of like the barbarians, the space barbarians. All right, so they arrived. We'll go ahead and... Do I do it that way? Okay, I do it that way. I can colonize it now. And that'll be Sias 4 here. Can you like... Is there like an auto improve? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think there is. I just want to see how it does it. Just to see what kind of things that they're going to manipulate. But it doesn't look like so. Manual input does not appear to be what I would hope it would be. I was hoping that click would make it automatic, but it doesn't. Because I really don't know what I'm doing here. Gov oh, governor. Governor disabled. Governor disabled. Okay, but it's definitely just not disabled. So let's do a balanced. And see what happens. Empire point gain? Oh, what would I get the five for? For ship combat, probably. Oh, I don't like that I can't go to other menus while I'm in one menu. All right, so natural merchants, let's take five points in that. And then market manipulators. We're going to, like, focus on money now. <laughs> Screw the whole, like, construction thing. We're going to make it... I, I see, like, there's, there's systems here that I can appreciate, right? There's a lot of depth here. I can just... I can feel it. It just needs to be made more obvious. Or maybe there needs to be a better tutorial, because the tutorial right now... Is just word salad. And for me, I'm not really good at reading. I mean, I'm good at reading. I literally do it all the time. I don't want to read my video games. I want to play them. So most of the time, I just I do better with a, a more interactive tutorial system. So if that's something that can be taken care of or like worked, that's better. Or like if they could maybe possibly do like a video of how to play and the things that you should be looking at. That's also something that I think people get really into and, and can learn better that way. So, I mean, like I'm, I, like I, I, I'm, wow. Yeah, I can speak now. I like what I'm seeing. I think that there are systems here that could really be fun to play with. Can you mess with it? Oh, you can. Cool. I just want there to be more transparency in the game mechanics because, like I said, the tutorial just isn't what it could be. It might be the best tutorial ever as far as written tutorials go, but like I said, I'm not the type that learns from reading. I'm the type that learns from doing. And I just don't feel like there's enough feedback to, like, why am So I guess, like, I just really shouldn't be doing that. I really shouldn't have gotten 100%, I guess. But even that tech tree, it's like so different than most that it's kind of hard to figure the hell out. So I think it would benefit from being a little bit more obvious or maybe like more SOTS like. Sorry, more Sword of the Stars like. Just so we could understand it a little bit more. Just so there's a reference point. Because you don't want to do too many things that are different. And I appreciate different. I really do. And I can totally get behind different. But when everything about a game is different then it starts to make it difficult. So, and there'll be people here that want to to overcome that, and I totally get that. But for me, I kind of feel overwhelmed with a lot of different. So, 
this is a game I'm going to try to learn. I'm not going to lie. And I'm going to come back and hopefully provide you with the kind of walkthrough that I want now. So let me know if that's something you guys want. I'm happy to invest my time if that's something you guys want. Because I think that's... That there's something here. There's something here. And I, I love finding little diamonds in the rough. Even if the diamond's not quite as as smooth and polished as it could be, it still it still oozes with something that, that most Forex games just doesn't have don't have anymore. So I can see why there's some hype around this one. But until then guys, I'm gonna do my best to learn it and come back and like I said, maybe provide at least some basic knowledge and then we'll go from there. Let me know what you guys think of this. Until next time, this is Rob from Explominates. Keep exploring.